Again, Commission, I am pleased to present today's centennial moment on Bugs to Imprezas, the history of automobiles at the Port of Vancouver. Now, it's somewhat ironic that I'm talking to you about the transportation of automobiles since they themselves are designed and built to provide transportation. Since 1972, the shipment of autos has been an important cargo for the Port of Vancouver and for Southwest Washington. We've come a long way since the early days of treating autos like most other cargo, lifting them on cargo nets and then onto the docks. Today, the Port of Vancouver is one of Subaru of America's three ports of entry into the United States. This unique type of cargo is known as RORO or roll on, roll off cargo because vehicles are actually driven on and off the vessels to port docks before resting in driveways and garages across the country. At the Port of Vancouver, members of the ILWU are responsible for the safe and efficient handling of the approximately 50,000 automobiles the port handles each year. RORO is not unique, is not only unique in the type of cargo that it classifies, but also in the type of vessels required to transport these items. Automobiles are lightweight cargo and use row-row vessels of various types to transport cargo between ports. Distinguished by their box-like appearance, these vessels usually contain 12 to 13 decks with low ceilings to pack in as many vehicles as possible. The shipment of automobiles hasn't always been so specialized, however. In fact, the automobile is relatively a new invention in terms of our nation's history. The first gasoline-powered car in the United States was invented in 1893, and the port didn't import them beginning at that time, but it wasn't until 70 years later. But the sheer inventiveness of these early inventors led to more experiments, and soon the automobile industry would change the face of small-town USA. Main streets went from a gathering place for people, horses, and wagons to a parking place for the automobile. The trolley cars were displaced to make room for more cars. Brick streets were covered with asphalt to provide a smoother ride for passengers. Filling stations, auto dealers, battery stations, and oil depots began popping up across the United States to make way for the car displacing older technologies. These and other changes continued to take place throughout the first half of the 1900s. Then, in 1963, just as cars were becoming fixtures of domestic social freedom, the Port of Vancouver received its first share of the auto import business. This same year, the port was granted full terminal status from the Pacific Westbound Conference and the Inbound Conferences Recognizing the port's capacity to accommodate major cargoes, and this gave preferred status for shippers making West Coast stops. Paired with the ability to now handle 10 ships at a time, imports moving across the port docks diversified, and the port welcomed 104 tons of autos in 1963, foreshadowing a role in future auto trade. However, while the automobile was taken off domestically, Foreign countries were also in the marketplace, and both the U.S. and world markets were experiencing imports, first by German Volkswagen Bugs, and then by Japanese fuel-efficient, well-built small cars. In the midst of this change, the Port of Vancouver entered the auto import business. Knut Cavell, president of Riviera Motors, the largest Volkswagen importing and wholesaling firm on the West Coast, discussed a possible move of imported cars to Vancouver. He thought Portland and Seattle were overcrowded, and he liked the better access that Vancouver provided for his company's truck fleet. In the fall of 1972, the first ship of Cavell's cargo for Vancouver arrived, carrying Volkswagens, Porsches, and Audis from Germany. While the short-lived partnership between the port and Riviera Motors introduced the port to auto importing business, it wasn't until 1992 
that the port saw the possibility of a huge player in the auto industry calling on Vancouver as a port of entry. Subaru of America approached then Port Executive Director Byron Henke to work out an agreement between the two organizations. Henke quickly put together a package that included the development plan for Terminal 4, which would handle Subaru automobiles. Later that year, Subaru, which is Japanese for the constellation Pallades, began importing vehicles onto port docks. As you might expect, this Roro cargo is pretty fast-moving cargo. The average ship load of about some 1,250 autos can be discharged in approximately five hours. These cars originally unloaded at berth four and soon crowded the area at terminals two and three, as well as any other area port crews could find. Henke noted, we've got cars running out of our ears. They're parked everywhere. Subaru of America and the Port of Vancouver concluded a lease agreement in 1992, which led to the development of Terminal 4. In support of this new terminal development, the port reached an agreement with the Port of Portland in 1993 to lease a floating hull that would be refurbished and used as the berth for vessels to discharge or load this row row cargo. This is the same berth 10 that is still used today. That same year, approximately 25,000 vehicles arrived for unloading, contributing to the largest yearly shipment of auto cargo to the port. Terminal 4 was completed in 1995, and the port and Subaru of America continued to have a strong partnership in this important business. Now, after the vehicles arrive on port property, Subaru conducts processing operations, which are known as accessorizing and pre-delivery inspections, which at any one time can create up to about 80 local jobs. Splash guards are installed, radios connected, mirrors added, roof racks in the past have been placed on uh, vehicles. And then each car is inspected before being transported to dealerships across the nation via truck or rail. And of course, that practice still continues today. The port continued to be Subaru of America's only U.S. port of entry for more than a decade. It wasn't until 2006 that Subaru expanded to include an East Coast port of entry. And then in 2011, another West Coast port of entry was added to the mix. Now, clearly, autos have been an important part of our past, and they will continue to play a critical role as we move through this century. Car imports and exports create important jobs, and the number of Subaru imports is only expected to increase in the coming years. In the midst of the continued worldwide economic uncertainty, the port's partnership with Subaru is crucial in riding out the storm. The Port of Vancouver staff looks forward to the future successes this relationship offers in terms of creating these jobs and generating economic prosperity for our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Mr. Schiller. Sir. On the previous screen, was that a Volvo or a Bug in the front pew there? What is that? I see the, is it that little, is it the tractor? that yeah, you're looking like at or the Volkswagens no, behind it? looks like it. a tractor. What is that? Was that on the ship or is that pulling the cars off? Uh, I don't believe it's pulling the cars off. I wouldn't think so. That's what Longshore do, right? Well, drive them off. Yeah, the cars uh, should be rolling on and rolling off and they should be driving yeah. off <laughs> under their own uh, power. Doesn't, that, doesn't, uh, that particular doesn't look vehicle like a looks Volkswagen. older than 1963. <laughs> That's a, that's a station wagon, uh, Commissioner, and very possibly they, they've been taking uh, longshore personnel onto the vessel, and uh, now they're coming back to pick no, up more. And the, and the last the, the last car in line is an orange uh, Volkswagen. I recognize yeah. that, but I'm talking about the vehicle in front of the station wagon with the tire on the front of it. That's and your the tractor. That's yeah. like a yeah. milk truck. That was your time. first car, Commissioner Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> Thank you again. Thank Thanks. you, Mr. Schiller.